fuel filter and see if there's any fluid leaks, gasoline leaks anywhere. Is it perfectly? Oh, it's dripping. We got a drip. The fuel line that, um, yeah, it's pouring right out, Gil. Okay. All right, we got a leak, and it's I know exactly where it is. Well, we got the carburetor set up in the car, running properly, and no longer leaking fuel at the fuel filter. This is the filter that had been on the car. If you take a look, you see this is quarter inch pipe thread. I don't know who, but somebody long before me took this fuel filter and ran it down into the carburetor housing almost to the point where it was starting to touch the filter housing here. Normally there's no need to do that with pipe threading unless someone's already done it. In which case the threads either in the carburetor and or on the filter get distorted a little bit and my concern was the next time someone put a filter in there it may not be able to be tight enough for the pipe threads to do their job and seal the gasoline from leaking. What we did was I went to a local parts store, AutoZone. I got a new filter hoping that part of the running of this in deeply would have compressed this metal as opposed to causing the casting for the carburetor body hole to get larger. I also got a O-ring. When we came back, I put Teflon tape on the new threads of the new filter after I took this one off. And just to reiterate something I said earlier, Teflon tape isn't really intended to stop leaks with connections like this. It's supposed to lubricate the threads, but it also works pretty well helping to stop leaks. So I put that on, and then I put the O-ring on here. And then I turned the new filter into the housing. It went in pretty far before it started tightening up. So it tells me that the threads at the hole that the filter goes into and the carburetor casting has indeed been expanded because of this first filter being jammed in so far. But I went until I saw that the O-ring was getting some contact. I went a little bit further to make sure that O-ring would have a chance to seal the um, the filter from leaking. So we started the engine and ran it for a while, and we had no leaks. So my guess is that this particular carburetor from here on forward will always need to have an O-ring put on between the filter and the casting, which luckily is pretty smooth where the threading is to put the filter in. This is the O-ring gasket I used to seal the gasoline leak at the fuel filter where it entered the fuel inlet of the carburetor. This shows the O-ring gasket installed on an oil plug bolt. The idea is to install the same O-ring gasket on the fuel filter in much the same way. This is where the O-ring gasket gets installed on the fuel filter. The flat flange of the O-ring gasket keeps it centered. This is the carburetor fuel inlet where the boss is machined 
flat enough and smooth enough to provide a good area for the o-ring gasket to seal. In this picture you can see the gap between the fuel filter and the carburetor fuel outlet boss. That is the gap that the o-ring gasket fills in. When we had rebuilt this carburetor and put it back on the car and started the engine, we had a bit of fuel leaking from the fuel filter where the inlet was into the base of the carburetor. Somebody previously had run that fuel filter in really far. Probably wasn't necessary unless someone before that ran in pretty far and hogged out the threads. So rather than try to bottom out a fuel filter into the housing, I got a new filter. Even though this is perfectly good, I was thinking maybe these threads here got a bit crushed from being put in so far. So maybe a new filter will fit a little tighter. I put more Teflon tape around the threaded end. Not that I've done that to try to stop a leak, because that's not what Teflon tape or thread seal is supposed to do. It's supposed to lubricate the threads, but it can help stop a leak. And then I went over to our parts store and got some O-rings. And the O-ring that I got has a center diameter just big enough to go around the threaded part of the fuel filter. After I did that, I tightened the filter into the housing of the carburetor until I could see that the O-ring made contact. I went a little bit further to put a little pressure on it, but not so tight as to crush it. So now, we're looking at a situation where hopefully the fuel leak is gone. If you look carefully in this picture between the fuel filter and the carburetor inlet, you will see where the O-ring gasket is installed. This turned out to be a wonderful repair. So we fixed the fuel leak at the carburetor entrance where the fuel filter was, but there was another small leak elsewhere at the fuel line, so I will cover that right now. Dry fingers, still dry, still dry, still dry. Good. Okay, we nailed it. Alrighty. So far. But wait, there's more. There's more. Let me explain. We had a leak in a new area. And I took off the clamp thinking maybe the clamp is too large a diameter for this fuel line. The size clamp says it's for 5 16 to 7 8 inch hose. That's a 5 16 fuel line hose. It should have worked. If it had been too big a hose, the saddle, which the tightening screw goes into, has an arc that would not be tight enough to seal properly if it is too large a hose clamp. So I took the clamps off to see what the saddle looked like. And if you take a look at this one, I'm gonna put it up against the white background. On the one side of the saddle inside, you'll see some of the clamp 
strap. I'm gonna point to it. The crime strap is bent almost 90 degrees. Right. And that would have been inside yeah, sticking up. the clamp surface into the outside diameter of the rubber hose. That would have been enough to distort the rubber hose to keep it from clamping consistently around the whole inside circumference. If you look closely at the inside surface of this clamp, you'll see a small tab or tang that was pushing into the outside of the rubber fuel line. That caused a leak to happen. Well, I had another clamp. I took it out, took off the other clamp, and made sure that there was no further little tang inside. Put them on, tied them down, but I did not tighten them down to where it's crushing anything. I just want to make sure it was tight enough so if I tried to turn the clamp and hose, I couldn't. That's all the sealing I need. No more. I also checked for fuel leak where it used to be on the inlet where we now have the O-ring helping close that. It's all dry. So, a lot of work for a small fuel leak, but no fuel leak is a good fuel leak.